All right, now that it's built, we're going to go ahead and set everything up. Now, the first thing I always do is make sure to flash, flash the latest uh, software for your foreign one, the ESCs. So go ahead and take a micro USB to USB cable and plug in your flight controller. Uh, the Hobbywing stack does have pass-through configuration, so it will be able to program your, uh, your ESC through the flight controller. Once you're plugged in, I use the BL Heli uh, Google Chrome configurator. You can download that from the Google Chrome store, and you connect it with the USB. And once you're in here, you have to power up. Make sure you don't have any propellers, and then you have to connect your power to the ESC, so go ahead and plug in the quad and once it's plugged in you read the setup and it's going to go through and read all four of them and I already know that it's behind uh, we're going to go ahead and flash all of them they have a new version and it is the 16.67 Bia Heli multi shot you want this one right here this is the one that allows you to do turtle mode um, and you'll need it. So, and this will flash all of them at once. Well, it'll do it all for you at once instead of going through each one individually. So, we'll wait for this. And while we're at it, go ahead. I always go ahead and do this. I go to um, 1000, 2000, or as close to it as possible. It's not allowing me to do it. 2004 is fine. I I don't ever have any issues. I just do this so everything's set the same. All right, and now you see up here it says ESC flashing four. Uh, it's finished. That means all of them are finished. Now that we set the new min throttle and max throttle and the PPM, I uh, start the setup. And reading setup and it's done. Uh, everything's done, finished. At that point, you can exit out of here. We will come back in here in a minute probably to have to change the motor direction, but we'll have to do that after getting the flight controller programmed. So disconnect. Ah, uh, that sounds nice. Okay, now we're gonna open up Betaflight. If you don't already have this, go to Google Chrome Store and search for Betaflight, and it's gonna be the configurator for 3.22. Your Hobbywing stack does not come with the latest uh, firmware of Betaflight, so first thing we're gonna do is go to the firmware flasher, and you're going to choose, oh, first off, see right here, it says COM4. We need to put this in DFU mode. It's the programming mode. On your flight controller, right next to the USB port is a button. So in order to get this into DFU mode, you're going to have to unplug your USB from the computer. Now go to manual selection. Hold down that button next to the USB port on the flight controller, and then plug in the USB cord back into your computer, and it'll pop up in DFU mode. At this point, you can let go of the button, and you're good to go. Uh, we'll go over here. It's it's now uh, ready to be flashed. We'll go up here and we're going to leave it on Omnibus F4SD. And we're going to choose the latest firmware version that is available, which is 3.2.1. When we get in here, you can no reboot se sequence, uh, full chip erase. Um, that's all that matters. And we're going to load the firmware. And this is the latest one. At that point, you hit flash, and it'll begin erasing your board and flashing the latest version of Betaflight. All right, programming is successful, so we're going to go ahead and connect. And now it's open. As you see, everything's moving. I want you to notice, I'm actually, you can't see the quad right now, but I'm leaning the quad forward and it's showing it leaning backwards. And that's because we have the flight controller uh, and the Four and one flipped uh, 180 degrees on its yaw axis, so it's turned 180 degrees uh, in order to fit it inside the fastback frame. You don't have to worry about that as long as you're going to copy my settings 
it's already going to be set up for you. And the way we're gonna do this is I have this right here. It's gonna be a dump file that you can just copy. I'll have it linked down below the video and on the uh, Fastback Sales page. That way you can copy it. And I'll keep it up to date with my tune and everything. You go into the CLI tab and you paste the entire thing and hit enter. As you see, it's going through right now and it's programming your entire flight controller to work. And this is programming it with a Tyrannus setup. Um, if you're not using a Tyrannus setup, a, a free sky setup, I will show you how you can change that in a minute. All right, once that's done, you type save and you hit enter and it'll reboot. We're going to connect again to it. And now everything is set up. The ports tab set up. Uh, the configuration tab is set up. Something I want to point out is I am running reverse motor direction. Um, that means when you put your props on, you're putting them on reverse from what is standard. Um, the reason I do that, so when you undo that, you can see right here, it's this is the standard mode right there. Now, I reverse it for two reasons. Um, the first reason is this way the props, if I happen to catch grass, don't fling any grass or mud or anything into my lens. That way it makes it more likely that I'll be able to keep going uh, unobstructed. And the second reason is when you clip objects, like if you're going through a gate, if your propeller is spinning this way and you happen to clip the edge of the gate, you're going with the direction that you're passing the gate by. So the gate will just run through it and it once again creates a scenario where you're more likely to continue going without issues. If you have your motor's normal direction, this is fighting against whatever you're gonna hit and it can damage your props more and cause a more severe wreck. So that's just what I've noticed. As far as performance, I don't have any issues with performance or I don't notice any difference in performance either way. It's mostly just for the uh, lens and catching things, uh, catching obstacles. Uh, in this setup, we're running air mode on. It's always gonna be on anytime you're running it. We're running the OSD, anti-gravity, and dynamic filter. So I do run dynamic filtering. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. If you are running a free sky receiver, it's going to already be set up for your free sky receiver. Um, this is the setting right here. If you're gonna be running a, uh, 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 sorry. If you're running Spectrum, you have to go in here and change up the spectrum. I've actually never set up a spectrum, but I'm, I believe this is the setting you'll have to change right there. And it should work from that. Like once you change that, it should work. If if it doesn't, I apologize, uh, go Google it or jump in the Needle Frames Facebook group. And I'm sure there's somebody in there running spectrum that can help you out. Uh, right here, if you don't wanna run, it will be fun. Change this from my handle to whatever your handle is because on your OSD, it will set it up right there smack dab in the middle. So I run, I run this, I run uh, full voltage, main battery voltage. I run, uh, I like to see how many amps I'm pulling. I like to see my fly minutes. I don't, I don't have the timer on for uh, on time because that's not important to me. It's the fly minutes I wanna know how long I was flying for. Uh, besides that, I don't set anything else up on the OSD. Uh, I have thought about doing, there's this main battery usage one that's like just a, it's a scale, but I've been running this voltage for so long, I like it. Other than that, the uh, average cell voltage, this one's something I'm thinking about starting to run. Uh, that way, because when I'm running like, if I'm running 5S, I, I know what 4S is supposed to be when I need to land. 5S, I have to do a little mental calculations because I just started running it. So having an average cell voltage would make that easier. Um, it just depends on what you want to do. I try to land uh, no lower than 3.5 volts per cell. Once you land, it will end up being, so that, that'll be 14 volts over here. Uh, once you land and the battery settles for a minute, it'll actually raise up usually to about 3.6, 3.7, which is good. Um, what was I gonna show you? So dynamic filtering. Uh, dynamic filtering, when you're setting up dynamic filtering, you are supposed to actually be on PT1 right there. And it actually doesn't look like it copied over my settings. Okay, so it's PT1 and
This goes to zero. I'm gonna confirm this here in a second on my other quad, but this is supposed to be already set up. I'm not sure why I didn't copy it over. But we're turning the, the uh, not that notch filter. We're turning that notch filter, frequency off, putting it at zero. And we're turning this one off and putting it to zero. And this is my usual setup. I'm surprised I didn't copy it already over. It had me on buy quad. And I think my rates are already set up correct. Yeah, my rates are right. And I'll have to double check on my current race quad. Uh, but assume that this is correct and you should be good to go. At that point, uh, in here I have my arm switch set to my auxiliary one. And so I'm going to turn my controller on right now. And just to show you, I'm actually going to have to plug my quad in. I do not have props on. And so when I flip my arm switch, <laughs> well, there we go. It's not actually working. Let me check to see what's going on. All right, so turns out the new RXSR, the cable that came with it, wasn't already set up for uh, SBUS. It was uh, configured for smart port. Um, I just went and downloaded the manual and so it was ground, 5 volt, and smart port. Those are the wires that I already set. All I did was depin the smart port and put it in the S bus out CPPM uh, port. And as you see, I now have full functionality over here. Okay, so what I wanted to show you then after that was modes tab. I have it set up to auxiliary one. That's my quad and background arming. And then also here down below, I had the, this is turtle mode. We're calling it turtle mode. They have it in here as flip over after crash mode, but everyone's gonna be calling it turtle mode. I don't know why they don't just have it in here as turtle mode. Uh, this is set to my auxiliary two. So what you have to do for this to work, um, you have to disarm, uh, flip that switch into the arm mode or into the, uh, the switch you have it for, set for. And then you rearm right then after that and it will reverse the motor direction. And all you do is at that point on 2.1, your motors aren't gonna spin until you bump your roll or pitch receiver, so our uh, stick. So right here, when I bump my roll, my two right ones right there are turning on, that'll flip you over. When I bump this, my two left ones, pitch is the front ones, pitch down is the back motors. So there's your turtle mode set up for you. Uh, what we want to do after this, uh, you're already set up. You don't have to change a thing unless you have a different transmitter. Uh, you do have to, I'm sorry, the only thing you have to change is to line up your arm and flip over switches, your auxiliary switches to coincide with either this or however you usually set it up or can set it up. The next thing you want to do is go in here and you want to check your motors and make sure motor one spinning, that's your back right, and it is spinning, check the motor direction. So the way I do that is I just have it down really low right here, just a little bit of movement going on, and it's moving in the right direction. I check motor two. So, and you can just use your finger, just be gentle with it and go feel it. This one's actually moving in the wrong direction. Motor three is also in the wrong direction. And motor four is correct. So two and three are the wrong direction. Um, one and four are correct. So what we do is you have to disconnect from here. You disconnect from there and you go back to the BL Heli suit. You connect, read setup. And we'll go into motor two and three, which were wrong. And you just reverse the motor direction and you write the setup. Okay, and up here, it's finished. You disconnect. And we're done. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put some props on and I'm gonna go out and do a hover test. It's actually raining outside. So I'm gonna do a hover test in the garage and wrap the video up.
All right, wish me luck. go successful maiden i hope your build goes as smooth as mine went let me know if you have any questions down below and uh any any technical troubleshooting issues and i'll help you solve them as best i can uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel i'll do uh, stuff like this from time to time all right take care thanks bye